Yo, 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 PD Grizz here. Sixers kicked some ass last night. It looks like they're going to be champions very soon, hopefully. So, I'm going to talk about one of my newest acquisitions today, and that is a vintage champion. Uh, this, in fact, is a champion, uh, what the, uh, the cool kids call a Type C. It is the third iteration of the champion. The first two feature the magnificent magnifying glass and the fantastic Phillips driver. Anyway, how about that alliteration? Uh, yeah, that's alliteration. Yeah, nope, nope, consonants. That's consonants. Alliterations when you use vowels repeating consonants. Magnificent magnifying glass and the fantastic Phillips. How about that? I am very impressed with myself today. But yeah, I picked this little doozy up for like. 20 bucks, 22 bucks, something like that. Very cheap. This is a pre-1985 champion. So, uh, actually, I think it's, I don't know, it might be earlier. I think it's earlier than that. And it doesn't have the plus scales, doesn't have the pin. I do believe these are original scales. They're solid scales, not the uh, hollow ones like the newer ones. Uh, has no hook, has no chisel. So, this is a champion that, uh, is from like 1973 to 1985, uh, probably the earlier end on it. It didn't come with the uh, tweezers, so I put this in here. It may very well have had the metal tweezers, but for now, it's got the plastic tweezers. Got a little chip at it. Got a little war paint on it. You know, no big deal. Just shows that it's that it's lived the life a knife should live. But anyway, let's look at these back tools. We've got the. Decorative fluting on the corkscrew. Very nice. Love these uh, corkscrews. Uh, this fluting is pretty pronounced. Some of them, as they get more into the 80s, the fluting starts get, goes softer and then it gets deeper. I really think that's when, the, as the tooling wears out and is replaced, you'll see the fluting get lighter. And then all of a sudden, it'll pick up and come deeper again. Very cool. Let's do this first and close that. Then what we've got here is I'm sure somebody uh, much deeper into sack nerdcraft than me could tell you when this changed over, but this is the original uh, fine screwdriver, which to me is more of a medium screwdriver, not so fine, but it's just fine, works just fine, nice thing to have, but like you see, no, uh, no chisel, no hook. Then we've got that reamer. Reamer, no sewing eye, no eye, no all. Just a basic, plain ass reamer. Nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with the reamer. All right, let's check out the opening layer. Notice no half stop on the cap lifter screwdriver. And that is another thing that, that uh, proves that it is pre-1985. Very cool. Still got that wire stripping notch. Don't leave home without it. You never know when you're going to have to strip some wire on a notch. It's not like you could do that with a knife or scissors or your teeth or anything else you have. But very cool to be included anyway. I'm all about squeezing features into unused space, that, which is why they need to bring back the square Phillips with the file. I mean, come on, guys. We've got the uh, small flathead, 2D Phillips. I like 2D Phillips. It sounds fancy, you know, two-dimensional Phillips. And if you don't know, when you use a regular screwdriver, uh, because of the machining tolerances, uh, it's very unlikely that more than two surfaces are meeting up anyway. So technically, theoretically, you can get the same amount of torque with a 2D than with a 3D. And remember, the whole point of a Phillips is... To, minim, minim, to uh, put a maximum on how much torque can be applied so that the screwdriver jumps out rather than allowing you to over, tight, over torque a screw. We've got that long, sexy Phillips driver. Beautiful. That has a half stop. That also has, no, it doesn't have that locking feature. It's got a very tight snap to it. Now we've got everyone's favorite. It's my favorite frame the uh, gray frame housing with the eight power magnifying lens. Fantastic. Great way to, uh, you know, to light up the smoke of your choice on a nice day, like canoeing down a river, you know, very nice. 
You don't got to worry about your lighter or matches getting wet. Just break this out on a sunny day, floating on a tube or something like that, and a nice scenic lake in the Pine Barrens. Boom. That's what I call heaven right there. Then we've got the scissors. 91 millimeter screw pivot. Fantastic condition. Barely used. Excellent. Next is everybody's favorite and obviously the most used tool on any Swiss Army knife. I mean, how do you live without a fish to scaler and hook to gorger? And you'll notice I showed that this is what I was talking about on that uh, that clone I showed last week. They had a very deep notch in there. And if the notch is very deep, you're basically driving these points into the fish's jaw to pull the hook out, which kind of defeats the purpose of using a hook to scorger, which is to minimize the uh, suffering of the fish and make the hook. By making the hook come out easier, you are thusly minimizing the suffering the fish has to go through. Always a good reason thing. No reason to put the fish through any more trauma than they already did by being ripped out of their home with a uh, hook in their mouth. Um, and I love fishing, by the way, but I am a strong advocate for catch and release and for, uh, uh, you know... Uh, proper uh, release so that the fish doesn't wind up just floating upside down an hour later such as poking their air bladder if you do uh, fishing in deep water you should learn how to pierce the air bladder on fish a lot of times especially if you fish in the ocean a lot of people don't realize it is becoming more of a thing you'll actually see it in a lot of bass fishing competitions now when they fish in like water 25 foot or deeper they will use a little hollow needle and pierce the fish's air bladder because when the fish comes out it's similar to uh the bends in a scuba diver all the gases the their air bladder expands from the lack of, from the sudden decrease in pressure and because of how rapidly it expands they can't expel the air so often they end up kind of just floating on the top till they die very sad very unnecessary kind of ruins the whole it's, it's not really catch and release if you just throw the fish back in the water dead so you really should do everything you can to uh ensure the fish is survival and other than that you know if you're going to eat them that's fine keep them and eat them but if you're just fishing for fun make sure they go back healthy so you can catch them another day i had this fishing hole i used to go to as a kid a few miles from my house would ride my bike there and there were all these pickerel that would hang out right by this dam, and you're right where you could see them. And they were just flat out a nuisance. You know, you're trying to cast out, and these fish literally had their jaws just tore up. You could see where countless hooks, because these fish developed a feeding strategy of just sitting there and being caught to get a free meal. A uh, very interesting strategy. Obviously, pickerel are very hardy fish, so they can deal with it. Other fish might not deal with it so well, but it's a pain in the ass when you're trying to catch some bass. And you're catching a pit girl before you can even get your barely get your line in the water. I mean, I remember catching one uh, while I was a little kid fishing with my dad. I had some weeds hooked on my rod, and I was standing on like a beaver dam, and I couldn't get to the bait. I was waiting for my dad to come over with the bait or something, and I was just waving it around and stirring the water with a piece of grass hanging from my hook. And a pit girl jumped right out of the water and grabbed the hook with a piece of grass on it so shows how uh dumb and visually uh targeted they are we've got the file fan friggin tastic file uh I, this is the best version of the file in my opinion it's uh, a harder material and it uh handles uh harder uh metals like steel a lot better uh, the other file, you know, your cast iron is about the hardest thing you want to work on. The other, you, know, you might be able to get away with sharpening an axe with this. Uh, if you watch Felix Emler videos, he shows you you can't really sharpen an axe with the uh, later file at all. And this one might be questionable. Might get the job done now if, you, if you're in a pinch. Then we've got everybody's least favorite pen blade. Yep, it's a pen blade. It's boring, but there it is. You know, for me, I'd rather, if it's not a clip blade, I'd rather just have a nail file there. I think, you know, the nail file is more useful. And that metal file is a little rough to use on your fingers, so I, I, I don't do that. Then, of course, we've got our main blade. Four-line tang stamp. Lowercase v. Off the C8 piece with the crossbow and cross. For William Tell represent Switzerland. 
famous folklore. Dun, 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 the Lone Ranger. No, that's William Tell at Overture, buddy. I was the first chair of trumpet in the NJ All-State Band, man. So don't mess with me on that William Tell Overture intro. I will kill it. So let's compare it to a, a Swiss champ. So here is a post-91 Swiss champ. Still has the gray housing, but this has the hook. Here you can see the chisel that you did not see on that champion. Uh, later champions had the chisel. I guess the chisel was added in 86. Uh, looks like the chisel goes on the file layer. On that one, the uh, medium, the fine screwdriver went on the file layer. And then the, uh, you know, this one, the fine screwdriver is on the saw layer. They're the same thickness. So the tools are really interchangeable in place. And here we can compare the fine screwdriver, which I'll break this one out again just to show it. But because why not? Somebody, a little birdie asked me to make longer videos. So I'm trying to stretch these bad boys out. Uh, you know, I might be making the big YouTube bucks one day. So you got to put in the, the 10 minute mark. But there is your difference between the old fine screwdriver and the modern fine screwdriver. Very friggin' cool. Next, the hook. You know it. You love it. It is probably every sack lover's favorite tool. Definitely the most useful tool. I mean, I'm always carrying like bundles of newspaper wrapped in string. You know, you go to the bakery in the 1940s and you get a cardboard cake in a cardboard box with string wrapped around it bam you hang it from this little hook no problem then when dennis the menace bumps into you you don't end up dropping the cake all over the ground boom then we've got oh look at that it's a reamer with a sewing eye how unusual uh you know I, it was funny i i had a picture on reddit of a 19 of my 86 hoffert swiss champ which is somewhere around here not within reach but uh somebody was like uh Oh man, that thing looks good for how old it is. And, you know, in my head, like a, you know, a 40 year old knife is barely even old, you know, it's barely even vintage. I start to think uh, vintage is like 50 years and older and antique is a hundred, but that's just my personal preference. Anyway, here's another similar uh, alternative, the handyman. Fantastic. Uh, the handyman, this is one of my favorite carries. I don't find that I need the magnifying glass that much. Uh, I can get, you know, I don't even need the Phillips that much. I can get most Phillips done with that. What I'd really like is a Craftsman, but for whatever reason, they don't make the Craftsman, which is just this with a Phillips driver. They really ought to. It just seems like silly not to, especially since they have like uh, the Super Tanker and Deluxe Tanker. The handyman would be the next logical step up from that would be great. And uh, what they also need to do in the U.S. is the deluxe climber because they have climbers with pliers that, you know, you don't see in the U.S., but I see them uh, overseas all the time. So, you know, the addition here is you lose the uh, magnifying glass layer, but you get this. The earlier handymans actually just had the uh, fish to scaler before they uh, released the pliers. But anyway... Uh, so I want to talk about this Swiss champ. This is something I've mentioned before. These are what I, how I mod the nylon scales when they're beat up. I used a sanding drum on my Dremel, which, uh, you know, was actually an accident. I was just trying to sand them and was uh, not very uh, accustomed to using a Dremel. And the problem is when you use a high speed tool on plastic, it just basically melts it and rips it right out of the way before you can even, it, you can't have a light enough touch to do it. And so it just ripped in there. So then what I did was I tried to uh, buff it. And I used the same buffing wheel that I had used to polish some blades. So naturally it had that black stuff on it. And that, all that, the black gunk from the metal polish and the uh, metal shavings got worked in there. And it gave it kind of that color and texture. And I thought it was kind of nifty. I like it. I like the feel of it. Got a good texture for grip. And it looks interesting. You know, it's got like a faux wood texture if wood was naturally dark as red like that but as we all know you know red is the true color of a swiss army knife you know it, it's kind of not right to call it a swiss army knife if it's not red you know it's just it's just sad anyway 
I see that I'm coming up on 15 minutes. I think I've drugged this on for just long enough, but I've got something cool coming. I've got a couple cool ones coming to that will match this bad bear. So I've got a, uh, a craftsman coming, a couple of craftsmen's coming that show the different age of craftsmen's and I've got a champion B on the way in the next few weeks. So I will be able to show the full transition from champion to craftsman which craftsman was basically what they the champion b just basically became the craftsman when this the champion type c as the cool kids call it was released anyways thanks for watching i will see you in the next one pd grizz is out